With platforms like TikTok and Instagram Reels, it's become harder and harder to stay on task and avoid distractions, which leads to so many of us becoming obsessed with the idea of being productive. But productivity isn't just making your notes and calendars look pretty. In this video, we're going to be talking about productivity habits and how you can stay focused and get things done without procrastination. Not having a structure can make us feel unmotivated and distracted and it often leads us to doing everything at the last minute. And there's nothing wrong with playing things by ear as flexibility is such an important part of our life. But structure is necessary for creating a sense of stability and balance and otherwise you can be left feeling a little bit overwhelmed, stressed, and tired. In order to build structure, it is so, so important to plan ahead. Planning ahead keeps us organized and allows us to know what we need to do, where we need to be, and when deadlines are. And calendars are the perfect way to do this. They keep us on task as well as productive and prioritized, and by using them to schedule our daily work, we can avoid distractions and stay on track. One of my favorite platforms to schedule on is Notion. I know a lot of people use Google calendars or even paper calendars, but I like Notion and I use it for pretty much everything from my daily priorities, my schoolwork, and so much more. And just a reminder, your calendars don't have to be anything crazy with music, gifts, or anything along the lines of that. At the beginning of each semester, I go through all of my syllabuses and put in every due date with the links to every single assignment for every single class. This has helped me so much in staying organized. I never forget to do an assignment. I'm not swamped with work last minute. I try to set aside one day a week to get ahead of my assignments, whether that's a week in advance or two weeks in advance, and I really like doing this because it makes my life a lot less stressful. I'll link some references of Google calendars as well as paper calendars in the description as well, along with a free Notion template, and if you guys want, I can give you a full-on Notion tour. Just make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Having a planner goes hand in hand with having a calendar. It maintains effective schedules. The best results are stemmed from prioritizing and planning tasks prior to working on them, and I do this by making weekly and daily to-do lists. It is extremely common for people to create unrealistic to-do lists, and I know I've done it so many times in the past. And it's definitely possible to read, write, paint, play piano, do homework, go to work all in one single day but it'll probably leave you burnt out and unsatisfied by the end of it. The key to creating a reasonable and realistic to-do list is to write down one to two big tasks that are mandatory and then add smaller goals that are realistic to accomplish. Something that's really helpful is dividing big tasks into smaller goals. Let's say I need to write an essay for my art history class. The first thing I would do is read through my material and make notes. The next thing would be to create an outline for my essay. I'd then write a rough draft. After that, I would revise it, then comes my final essay, and then writing my essay is done. By dividing bigger tasks into smaller goals, it makes things a lot more easier and more manageable. Habits shape your life more than you realize. With habits, half of our daily actions are predetermined by context and performed unconsciously. The first step in creating healthy habits is to be aware of what you do on a regular basis. Look for patterns in your behavior and take note of what you want to change. For example, say you get up around 12 p.m. on the weekends, but you feel like half of your day is being wasted and you want to start getting up a little bit earlier, around 9 a.m. The first thing you can do after you notice this pattern and you have established your goal is to ask yourself how you can fix it. Your solution would be to set multiple alarms that lead into your 9am alarm so you know you'll wake up around 9am. You could also put your alarm in a place where you know you'd have to get out of bed to turn it off. And the next solution would be to go to bed earlier. The next step in creating healthy habits is to be consistent. I know everybody says it, but it really is true. Doing your desired behavior like getting up a few hours earlier gets progressively easier when you do it every single day. And by keeping it consistent, your habit eventually will form and it will become second nature. The National Library of Medicine says that based on daily repetition, people can expect a habit to form in about 10 weeks. Adding structure to your day can make you feel so much more in control and it increases productivity, organization, and attention. Creating a routine is the foundation to structure. But just remember that routines don't have to be anything crazy like waking up at 5 a.m., going to the gym, taking a cold shower, and watching two TED Talks before 8 a.m. A routine could be as simple as waking up at 9, making yourself coffee, writing a to-do list for the day, and calling a friend for a morning chat. 
and then after making breakfast. Even if you don't thrive on a tight schedule, establishing some sort of routine in your day can assist you in times of unpredictability and stress. When I work in a messy environment, I literally cannot focus on anything. My mind is literally just not there. And I know that sounds dramatic, but it's true. Working in a messy environment is so distracting and it reduces our ability to stay focused and makes us feel overwhelmed and stressed. It is so important to keep your space tidy as clutter affects your brain and your work. With a clean environment, we're able to focus and process information better and increase our productivity. Like I said earlier, when I have a messy room, I can't focus on what I'm supposed to do. It's so hard for me to get things done when I feel crowded in my own space. If my room is chaotic, then so is my mind. And with a clean and clear space, I can stay on track and focus better. My number one way to reduce clutter is to incorporate cleaning in my everyday routine, aka clean up after myself. For example, if you're getting ready to go out and you're trying on a bunch of different clothes, instead of trying on clothes and tossing the pieces you aren't wearing onto the floor or onto your bed and making a huge pile, put your clothes away right after you make the decision that you aren't going to wear it. By doing this, you won't have to worry about that mountain of clothes when you come back home after a long day or night out. And if you always find yourself in a rush and you can't ever clean up after yourself right away, set aside a time during the day, whether that's in the morning or before you go to sleep, to clean. Since the majority of my schoolwork is online, maintaining a clean online environment is just as crucial to a clean environment in real life. I have hundreds of different files on my computers, like PDFs and JPEGs and RAWs. It's really necessary for me to declutter my computer. And if I don't, my laptop starts to become really, really slow and my desktop screen gets messy fast. I try my best to set aside one day a week to clean out my online space. For files that I need like RAWs for my photography class, I tend to keep on my external hard drive, which saves me so much space on my laptop. If you do any online creative work, I highly recommend getting an external hard drive. It will save you so much time and space. And the most important tip of them all is to listen to your mind and your body. Don't overwork yourself and make sure you're taking breaks when you need them. Toxic productivity is such a horrible thing and it can lead to so much stress, anxiety, and even burnout. So make the choices that work for you because they'll only make you healthier and more efficient with your time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more productivity videos, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.